Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Kay from Kay Digital Studio, and today I'm doing a video on how to create your own clickable hyperlinked digital planner, journal, or notebook. So I'm just going to begin by opening up my iPad. So the tools that I am using today are the iPad 2018 6th edition. This is um, the 9.7 size. I feel like this is the perfect iPad for my needs and my uses as well as the first generation Apple Pencil. And I'm also going to be using this app called Keynote. Keynote comes with um, updated iPads and Apple devices. So um, if you don't already have Keynote, you should be able to download it. So I'm just gonna open up Keynote here and then I'm going to click create presentation and I'm going to go with this white uh, presentation background here. That's usually my go-to. And then you're going to delete those because you don't really need those. And then essentially your digital planner, digital notebook or hyperlinked journal are all going to be characteristic of you and so I normally like to come in here to my photos and choose a nice background by hitting the paintbrush and then hitting this background and then image, change image, and then I go into my camera roll. <coughs> and I usually like these like very white or gray washed woods, so I'm just going to choose that, stretch, and then yeah, it's pretty good. So here is my background. Um, I normally choose like white or gray wood backgrounds for my planners. And um, these are just commercial images that you can get off Google Images or Pinterest um, that is open for your use. And then we're gonna come in here and we're gonna create the basis of our planner. And we're going to do this by clicking the plus button up here in Keynote and then clicking the shapes tool. And then um, you can choose the rectangle or the rounded corner rectangle for your planners. I normally choose the rounded rectangle for my planners just to give it a more journal feel. And depending if you want to make a portrait planner um, that goes long ways up or if you want to do a landscape planner which goes horizontal, it really just depends on your uh, preferences. Mostly I enjoy making landscape planners. I feel like I have more space to write, um, but I will show you how you can change the orientation of your presentation to make a portrait. And so you're gonna do that by clicking these three dots up here, coming down to document setup, and then you're gonna click slide size. And when you click this, you can choose the different um, ratios if you would like. So if you would want to do a portrait, you could click, click the three to four ratio and this will get you that kind of portrait setup to make like the perfect portrait planner but I'm going to stick with four to three because I want to make mine landscape for the purposes of this video so I'm going to go back to my rounded rectangle shape and I want my planner to take up essentially the whole slide I'm going to come in here and I'm going to press this green dot and I'm going to make harsher corners because um, I think that looks more realistic. Um, so I'm just going to leave space for the tabs I'm going to create soon and the rings. So that's pretty good. And of course you can come in here and you can click style, you can click fill, and you can use any one of their preset colors here. Or you can come in and you can pick from the color chart or you can do the color wheel. You can also do gradients in um, keynote if you would like kind of more of an ombre fill. So I'm just going to choose, let's choose, hmm, let's choose, I'm having a difficult time. Let's choose like a light purple. It looks nice. So I have my planner all picked out. <coughs> and what I'm going to do also, if you would like to make your planner look a little bit more realistic, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to paste it, going to add a border, and then I'm going to choose, whoops, I'm going to choose no fill. And the border I'm gonna choose is this style where it's kind of like dashed lines. And then I'm just going to increase it a little bit and then maybe choose like a gray color. And this will give your appearance of kind of like a stitched notebook. So then we have that all nice and lined up. 
And so then you have kind of like this stitched notebook or planner appearance, which makes it look really nice. So now I'm going to show you how you can add in um, rings, for example. So you're welcome to create your own rings in this app. There are videos out there which show you how you can make your own um, binder rings for your planner. But I actually drew my own rings in an app called Procreate, which is something that a lot of people who use planners um, who use digital planners also use. And so I have three different options. I have like a soft metallic gray, I have a soft metallic gold and a soft metallic black. And so for this planner, I think I'll go with my soft metallic gray, whoopsies. Um, so another thing, like as you could just see there, I meant to click on the rings, but I accidentally clicked on my um, stitching. What you can do is you can actually go into your paintbrush, you can click arrange and then you can click lock and it'll lock it down so whenever you're working with other elements, it won't move. So I'm going to move my rings over here and have them line up. So those are my rings right here. I think I'm gonna change the opacity of my background. It's kind of bright. So what I did here is I um, added a fill and I chose white and this is so I can turn the opacity down some. These are all of course just preference based. Um, you can make this planner however you would like. But I'm just showing you kind of tips and tricks of making a planner. So now that I've turned down the opacity of my background and hopefully there's not a glare on this um, and added my planner rings, I'll also show you how to add in tabs. And these tabs um, you'll add links to and be able to click when you import it into your PDF reader. So what you're also going to do is go back into the shape and you can click the rounded corners or whatever your preference. And then you can resize them how you want. Um, I usually mess with the sizing later when I have all my tabs in. And then I'm going to copy and paste and then kind of add some tabs in. So these are like main divider tabs, if you will. And so I'll just add those in. And then one thing you can do is you can um, hold down one shape and then select them all just by tapping. And then you're going to click this paintbrush up here, hit arrange, and then you're going to move them to the back of your planner. And another thing, if you want to make your planner look a little bit more realistic, you can also come into the paintbrush again, click style, and then go down here to shadow. And they have a variety of different shadow options to kind of give it a more 3D effect, if you will. So I'll do, I usually do this kind of shadow for my tabs. And then, um, let me unlock that, click this. And then I'll go in and do a shadow for my planner. And I normally click this one because this kind of looks more like an open book. And then let me fix this back and then lock. So I have already added my four main tabs in. And of course you can go in here and change the style of your tabs. So um, let's go with some pinks, different shades of pink here. Just so you can see kind of like the process that goes into creating these planners. Voila. And then I think I'll copy and paste yet again. So along the side is normally where I put my months for my planner. And so obviously, oops, I make these a lot thinner. Um, and then you, this is kind of a guessing game for me as far as like how thick can I make these tabs, but still fit in 12 tabs for the months. Um, and so what you're going to do is you're just going to copy and paste all your tabs, 12 for each month, or one for each month, 12 total. These look like they might be a little too thin, but that's okay. Whoops. So now I have my 12 tabs for the month. Um, obviously they're not centered. Um, perfectly but um, this is definitely something we'll have to play around with to get them even so I pressed one element down and selected them all um, and then I'm going to come up here to arrange and then I'm going to move them back here we go so now I have my 12 tabs in for the months 
And so um, if you want to be a little bit more fancy with your planner, you can come in and add like a title. Um, I already have a mask for a title that I'll come in and add. So, and with Keynote, it'll automatically constrain proportions on element all elements that you bring into Keynote. Um, and constrain reports this means it keeps with the ratios. Um, but if you don't want it to do that, you can come into the paintbrush, hit arrange, and then deselect constrain proportions. And then you're able to add or stretch as much as you want without it constraining your proportions. So I like to come in and add this. Just kind of give myself a title page, show you some of the things that I normally do for my planners. Come and make this white. Oh, whoops. That was supposed to be no fill. And this does take a decent amount of time. It's pretty tedious, um, but it's very enjoyable, I would say. So there's my title page. This is a place where um, you can put your name or the year. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna select the slide and hit copy. And then I'm gonna come in here again and hit paste. And then, oops, didn't mean to do that. Didn't mean to do that either, wow. And then I'm gonna come in here and delete this. And then I'm gonna come up here again and actually add another rounded rectangle. Let's make this white, because this is going to be our paper. And we're going to arrange it back so it's behind the rings. So now we have our paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste again. And so we have four tabs plus uh, 12 tabs for each of the months, or one for each month. So that's a total of 16 tabs. So that means we need 16 um, blank pages that we can link to. So I'm just going to copy and paste. Now that I have 16 white pages, we're going, I'm going to show you how to link your pages to make it a functional digital planner when you pull it into your PDF file. So what we're going to do actually is we're going to click this first tab. And when you select this first tab, you'll have all these options here, cut, copy, delete, comment, link, and animate. We're going to click this link. And then it'll automatically link to your next slide. And our next slide is two, and I do want to link it to two. Um, so it's fine to leave it as is, but I normally like to have link to slide two, just so when I'm going back over my tabs and I want this link to uh, slide two, it shows on there. So now we're gonna click this link again, automatically links to the next slide. We wanna make sure we link it to the slide that we want. The next slide is two, we don't want it linked to slide two, we want it linked to slide three. So I'm gonna click link to slide and I'm gonna click three. And then we're going to keep doing that. I want this to four. And this tab I want to link to five. And by doing this, we're creating hyperlinks to different, um, essentially slides in our PowerPoint. And so whenever we click this tab in our PDF viewer, it will pull us to this page. And so then you want to link to all 12 of these pages, so I last left off on five, so this one is going to be six. And this is kind of where the tedious part comes in, is when you have to link to every slide. But I'm going to show you a quick way that I link my slides, because I don't want to go to every slide and link over and over and over again, because it can get really tedious, especially if you add more tabs, or you have more than just your months here. And so, um, the way that I like to do it, and there are obviously different ways that people go about doing this, is I actually, oops, select, like I've been doing before, I click copy, I go to my next slide, and then I click paste, and then I just arrange it back. 
and it just puts the linked tabs over top of the non-linked tabs and that's not something you'll be able to see whenever you're using your planner and so you can just easily go to each page and click paste arrange them back and this will save at least oops at least hours of your time i'm clicking all kinds of random things And that is something I also do with my monthly tabs. So I will select one and then I'll go down and copy all of these and paste them to each slide. And that saves a tremendous amount of time. So for the sake of time, I'm going to leave my planner as is. Obviously I haven't finished it. None of these pages are hyperlinked, but just to show you the functionality of the planner and how you would finish your project, you're gonna come up to these thoughts up here you're going to click this export button. Make sure you click export and not share. And then it's going to have you choose your format and you're going to want to hit PDF for your format. And then here you can um, save to your files. And then um, depending on where you decide to save it. So I think I would just save it to my regular cloud drive. And then you're going to click add. And so then you have your planner all set, ready to go. You're gonna come in here to your files app. And then let's see where it is. It is right here. And then I'm gonna open it up and here is your PDF file. And then what you're going to wanna do is click this square with the up arrow. And then depending on which app you use, I use GoodNotes for my planner, but if you use another app, you'll wanna click the app. But I use GoodNotes, so I'm gonna click Copy to GoodNotes. I'm just gonna leave it uncategorized. Here is my planner that I just recently created. I'm going to click on that. And then to show you some of the functionality of this planner, you are going to just click your tabs and you want to make sure that you have the no pen option selected in good notes otherwise you won't be able to click your tabs so you can't really see the difference because they're just all white pages so let's say i drew whoa messy handwriting let's say i drew hello and then on this page i drew smiley face let me skip to this tab and draw a heart oops you click the tabs and you'll be able to see my drawings. So I'm going to click this tab. It says hello. I click this tab. Got my smiley face. This tab, it has my heart. So as you can see, it'll take you to the pages um, depending on how you have it linked. And so that's just a small and brief overview of how to create your planner. Obviously, it's really just making it your own, making it the colors that you love. Um, and just kind of organizing it and linking it how you see fit for your uses. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to comment them below and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. I'd love to hear your video requests um, and I'd love to get more videos out there for you guys that are making digital planners or digital notebooks or have an interest in graphic design. So thank you so much for watching this video. Be uh, feel free to share this with your friends and family, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in our next video.